Giant FM. It's 1028 on a Wednesday morning, and I'm joined in studio by the ever so knowledgeable Woodlawn CEO, John Alley. Boy, you put put the pressure on me this morning, <laughs> didn't you? Wow. Well, you know everything that's going on out there at Woodlawn, and well, I'm it, here to learn. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll help you understand that. So, board meeting was yesterday, and, uh, you know, we're trying to wrap up the year and looking at things. Uh, so, just kind of one of the things we talked to our board, and, and they actually got their flu shots yesterday at the board meeting. So, it is that time of year. Remember, get your flu shots. Right now, once you get your flu shot, it's not effective for at least two weeks for it to really, you know, get your um, levels up there. So, if you haven't had your flu shot, get it. Get it done. There was a news article or on the, the uh, TV the other night. There's actually been a death in Indiana. Yes, there Related to the flu. So, it's here. Flu season's here. Definitely get your flu shot. The other thing we talked about, uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And when you talk to all the, the physicians and the technicians, you know, early detection is the key for that. Oh, so yeah. it's not too late. You can still, we have open slots. You know, our new 3D scanner, it can detect the nodules years before you can feel them. So, you know, get with your medical professional. If you haven't had a recent mammogram, absolutely get one scheduled, especially with the new 3D. Because of that technology, like I said, it can really, you know, find a really, really small nodule before you ever know you have it. Early detection saves lives. So check with your medical professional. Get your mammogram if you haven't had one. And then every uh, this time every year, it's election of officers. So we did that yesterday. Steve Furnival uh, will be the board chair for 2020. Dick Belcher is vice chair. And Nancy Day will be secretary of the board. And it's the same officers we had last year. So, you know, it's one of those, uh, they must have missed a meeting or something because they, they yeah. put them right back in that same spot. So <laughs> looking for another, uh, another year of working closely with those folks as we set the direction for the hospital. The other thing we talked about a little bit, uh, you know, the Foundation Gala is coming up, and that's a biannual fundraising event for the Foundation. And it will be on December 7th in the Arlington Room, uh, which is right next to Geretti's. This biannual is how they raise their major fundraiser for support of the hospital. So, you know, some invitations have been mailed out. If you haven't got yours, call Deb Paxton at 224-1179, and she can get you an invitation uh, to either get a table, a single, a couple. Uh, it's just a really nice evening. A lot of things planned for that. We have a very active silent auction. A lot of really nice items you can come in, bid on, and hopefully you walk away a winner. Awesome. We finally, after we got through all that, got into the financials <laughs> for September. We were trying to put that off as long as we could. Uh, oh, September yeah. was not a very good <laughs> month for us. Uh, you know, revenue was down. And when we look at uh, our net revenue, almost a million dollars. So just oh. not a lot of people sick. Good for them, bad for us. Right. So our uh, p- total patient revenue was about $11.8 million. We wrote off about $7.6 million. So it left us an operating revenue of four point three million, and the unfortunate part, operating expenses was four point nine. So when you do the math, that yeah. uh, comes out with an operating loss of about six hundred and fifty nine thousand. It's a non operating income, which is things that we address that's not directly related to patient care. So we like to pull that out so it's not you know uh, diluting or inflating the the patient care. About four hundred eighty six thousand. So we did wind up with a net loss for the month of 162, almost 163,000. So not the position we want to be in. Uh, we're hoping though, as we look at October, November, and December, we can recoup some of that. Uh, it's been uh, just not a very good year for the hospital. We've had some really extraordinary expenses that has affected our bottom line. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's in our employee health. We've had some really sick individuals. And when we look at the, you know, what we thought our employee benefits were going to be for health, uh, we're about almost $1.8 million over what we projected. So oh. it doesn't take long for that to affect the bottom no, line so uh, you know we're trying to figure out uh, hopefully we can get these folks healed up and get them well as we start moving into 2020 and uh, did a preliminary pr- uh, budget for the board uh, so we just kind of handed it to them they have a month to look at it next month we'll come back do the formal presentation for the budget and then hopefully they'll vote on and that will start that process so we can get ready for 2020 right now the preliminary we're looking uh Hopefully everything goes like we predict, which is kind of a best guess in healthcare. Right. Hopefully we can have about a five hundred thousand dollar operating income for next year. So uh, it's going to be hard to get there. Everything in healthcare gets tighter and tighter. You know the the demands on us gets greater and greater. The reimbursement yeah. from payers keeps getting less and less. So we're getting squeezed from both ends. So hopefully we can come up with a plan next year and uh, generate that operation operational profit, and then move forward and use that to reinvest back into the hospital. 
So that was pretty well the board meeting that went fairly quick yesterday. Um, like I said, a lot of it was just kind of catching up on some things that you know need to be aware of. Talking about uh, the, again flu shots, breast cancer awareness month, the gala, and then finally in the election officers and uh, got that all the way and ready to move forward. All right, so you're looking forward to the gala? I'm looking forward to it, yeah. It's, they do it every other year, and uh, it's one of those, it's just, you know, quite a few people, we all kind of get together and just, you know, talk, and, and the, but the silent auction is the fun part, kind of watch, you know, people hiding their bids or waiting to the last minute, get up there, can they get the, you know, get the final bid in before they close? And I think they will close the bids down this year at 9 p.m., Okay. And then right away they'll announce then who was the lucky winner for whatever. In the past we've had uh, trips, we've had cruises. I mean, just you name it, they've had it. And it's it's the generosity of people within the community to say, yeah, I've got a condo, I'll donate a week to it, or I've got a, a cabin. Uh, we had a couple years ago a cabin in Vermont uh, mm. that was one of those that they donated for a week. So, like I say, a lot of really nice things come out through that foundation. That's their major fundraiser. This year, they are going to fund what's called a glide scope, uh, which is used both in surgery and in the emergency room. So if we have a patient come in and for whatever reason we need to intubate them and that, you know, they've got a, a difficult intubation, the glide scope, it, it helps the physician, CRNA, get that airway established. And it's basically like a little television camera that they can actually look at the vocal cords, look in the trachea as they put the intubation tube in. So, I mean, it really saves them a lot of time. And, and lots of times, you know, seconds count oh, if yeah. you have uh, airway obstruction. So this is a very vital piece of equipment uh, that the foundation has offered to use the proceeds from this year's gala to support the hospital by getting that piece of equipment. So looking forward to, to the gala. Hopefully a lot of folks about, you know, bid high, bid often on the silent, uh, silent auction items. And it helps fund, again, equipment that the foundation will purchase and donate to the hospital. Okay, and uh, I know last month we were talking about a recall that you guys had just dealt with. How's that looking? That uh, we kind of really lucked out on that one. The recall on the Nuke Med camera, uh, we had to take it out of service immediately because of a manufacturer problem with it. Well, within one week, you know, hundreds of these were ordered, and yeah. uh, we were down like two manufacturers. Hopefully, if everything goes right, we're anticipating the delivery of our new unit uh, November twenty eighth, or uh, excuse me, October twenty eighth. Uh -huh. and hopefully have it operational by the first week of November. So preliminary, when we first started this, they said, oh, it, it could be months before you get it. And, uh, you know, we had uh, kind of had our name in the in the ring early on because we were looking at one for a budget for 2020. Right. So we'd actually called them and said, we need a budgetary. Well, we, what we didn't know is that locked us in a position. So we were at the front of the list. Oh, So hey. that has really helped us. The old unit's already been uh, removed. Have to do some minor renov uh, renovations to the room. Electrical, you know, you can imagine oh, electrical yeah. components are different on this one than the old one. So that's all being done and uh, anxiously awaiting to get the new unit in, get the training done for the staff so we can start, you know, getting back doing those. Because that's a, another very vital part of our diagnostic imaging department to help physicians, you know, really what's going on with somebody. So we use it a lot. Right now, unfortunately, we've been having to, you know, refer folks to other facilities. We don't like doing that. You know, one, it's inconvenient to them because now they got to drive somewhere. Then the results have to come back. How do we get it back into our, you know, medical record system? Right. So it's nice that we got some lights at the end of the tunnel. And we're hoping that first, second week of November, uh, back operational with our own new camera. And uh, you know, when you look at it, it's got a lot more capabilities. The old, the old one was about 10, 12 years old. So technology has really improved. Oh, so yeah. we're anxious to get this one in. I think we can do a little more with it than we could with the previous one and expand that capabilities for our physicians to be able to look, you know, more tests in our area to help them with their diagnostics. I know uh, one of the big things that you guys have been working on throughout the year was the uh, cooling system. Um, I know temperatures are starting to kind of uh, get into that range that you were looking for. Have you guys set a start date on that yet? Right now, when I last I talked to the maintenance guys, we think we're going to wait and do it in the spring. Okay. Uh, the Right now, we're kind of out of that time frame where we need cooling. Uh, so, you know, we've drained the cooling towers and uh, starting that prep work. So we've got that window now, I think, early spring where it's going to give us a little more time to prepare everything, stage stuff. And then, you know, when it comes before warm weather gets here and, and after it's freezing, so it's a kind of a small window, uh, be able to get the new cooling tower in to ensure that we can keep cooling. Uh, that was our biggest concern as we're in that hot weather is if that current tower would fail, 
we'd lose a lot of our capability for cooling of the facility so we're kind of past that now and here lately people have been wanting heat so uh, we're not too much uh, concerned with cooling right now and i'm right. guessing from between now and next spring we're not going to have too many days where we're going to have to you know refill the chiller uh, to give cooled uh, air to the hospital and so it's you know it's all water controlled so we drain it so it doesn't freeze and if all of a sudden we get a warm spurt we have to you know, fill it back up with water so it can do its thing. So we're hoping uh, early spring, uh, before hot weather hits, we'll have the new chilling tower in place and uh, don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Well, congratulations on uh, everything that's been going on. It seems like overall it's been a pretty positive month it, apart from finances. Uh, other than the financial part, yeah, that's the that's the ouchy part that we yeah. have to deal with. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to predict uh, the amount of sickness you're going to see. And that basically that's what our business is, is we're dependent on folks. You know, if, if they have a, an issue, they can come to us. And what we're hoping is that we give the service that they like. And so when they do need us, we're there. They can come pay us a visit and we can get them on that road to healing. All right. Well, Mr. Ellie, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, I know you're a busy man and you got lots of work to do, so I'll let you get back to it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to talking with you again next month. All right. right here on WROI and RTC TV4.